In this section, we'll learn about container types. Containers are collections of individual values. So the first type we're going to learn about is vectors. Okay. A vector is a set of ordered elements. You have several individual values and they're in a specific order. Um, we can use the function C or for concatenate to put individual values together. So we can put numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4 together. So we can create a vector of um, different strings. So A, B, and C. Now we can use a shortcut to create sets of integer values. So here for n, instead of typing all of this, we could type just 1 colon 4. And that gives us still the values 1 through 4. Um, but what happens if you try to put together 1, a, and true? So we have a numeric value, character value, and a logical value. So let's look at this. In our environment, we have our variable m. It's a character vector. It's the chr here. So when we look at this, we have one inside of quotation marks, a in quotation marks, and the word true in quotation marks. Now remember in the last section I talked about what we call coercion. That is that when you're trying to compare values that are two different data types, um, one will get changed into the more compatible data type before they're compared. Now vectors have to be all the same data type. So if you try to mix up different data types, it will coerce them. It will change them all into the most compatible type. Now characters are the most compatible type, so it would um, turn them all into characters here. It'll make the character version of one and the character version of true. If we don't have any characters, we just have one in true, it will turn them both into numbers. So the numeric value of true is one, the numeric value of false is zero. So again, you need to be careful if you want to mix up um, values from different data types. We can use a different type of container called the list that we'll talk about in a minute. Um, but first we'll talk about how do you select values from a vector. If you want to pick out a specific value from the vector, you can do this in a few different ways. Okay. So R has a built-in vector called letters. If you spell it with capital letters, it's all of the capital letters in the um, Latin alphabet. If you spell it with lowercase letters, it's all the lowercase letters in the Latin alphabet. Okay. So we can select letters from this vector by position. So if you open brackets, these are the square brackets. Let's pick what's letter 5. We can see that's E. Letter 8. Oops. And that's H. We can also choose letters from the vector or items from the vector by number by using a vector of numbers. So you can even create a secret code. Um, let's create a vector of numbers that is um, 3, 1, 20. And then we can choose the third, the first, and the 20th letter from this vector letters. C, A, T. Now we can also create named vectors. So you can give each item in a vector its own name. So let's make a vector using the C concatenate function and each item is going to have a name. We'll call the first one first and call the second one second and the third one third. All right, so now we can see in our environment, 
we have a new object called v and it's a named vector so it will say named chr here so it's a character vector it's made up of characters but they each have a name when you look at v it'll print out like this you'll see first a second b third c and therefore you can choose items from this vector by name so if we want the second item we can put two inside the bracket but we can also put the character string second in there or third and see that okay now this gives you the result that's the named vector it's just it's like the vector with three items but it only has one item so it has a name if you want to get rid of the name you can give it double brackets Oops. so here now this just gives us an unnamed um, character which is the third item and again you can still use three here sometimes you might want to know how long a vector is so how many letters are there in the Latin alphabet we can use a function called length to find out how long is that vector we can also choose values from a vector using a repeated vector so if we want every other letter from the vector letters inside of the brackets we can put another vector that's the value true and the value false now whatever evaluates to true will be kept and whatever evaluates to false will be deleted from here and this gives us every other letter in the alphabet starting with a we could also do false true or say every third letter starting with b this can be really useful when you're trying to create data sets um, with different counterbalanced orders and you want to give every fourth participant um, a certain condition. Now, this can be a little clunky, so we can also use repeating sequences um, to create our vectors. There's two really useful functions. One is called um, SEQ. So it's a sequence. Now remember, we could quickly get the sequence, say, from 1 to 10 with this 1 colon 10 notation. But you can also use SEQ from equals 1 to equals 10 by steps of 1. And that gives you the same. Now that takes that's a bit longer, but it's a lot more flexible. So let's say we want to go from 1 to 100 by steps of 7, we can just do that. Um, or if we want to go from 100 to 0 in steps of 25. Whoops. Of negative 25, we can do that. Um, what if you know that you need to generate the numbers from 0 to 1,000, and in equal steps, you want um, 25 equal sections. Um, if there's 25 equal steps, then there'll be 20, or sections, there'll be 26 steps. So we can just say length dot out equals 26. So that will give you 26 values that equally divide up from 0 to 1,000. Now, the next function that's really useful is called rep. It gives you repeating vectors. So we could repeat, say, the letters A and B, and repeat that three times. So it will give you the vector AB, AB, AB. If you want to Let's say we instead want A to be repeated three times and then B to also be repeated three times. That, that is, they'd be repeated three times each. You can just use the argument each there. So 
oops, and that will repeat each item in the first vector this number of times. And we can do a slightly more complicated version of that. We can repeat each letter of the alphabet the same number of times that is its position. So A once, B twice, th C three times. So we set letters as the first argument and all of the numbers 1 through 26 as the second argument. And that can give us that repeating sequence. Now that we know how to create vectors, let's learn about vectorized operations. Okay? Now vectorized operations are just things that you can do to a vector that then happen to every item in the vector. Right? So remember if we had set um, the variable n to the number 2 and then we do n plus 3 we get the number 5. But what if we set n to the numbers 2 through 5? Then n plus 3 is each of those numbers plus 3. This is a vectorized operation. We've just added 3 to each item in the vector. Now this can help you to do a lot of things in the future. Let's say that you have, um, well, like questionnaire scores. Um, so you have a score for, let's say, 10 people. Let's use our norm function to, to generate scores for 10 people from a distribution with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 10. So we've got all of our scores. Okay. And let's say we want to create deviation scores from them. We want to subtract the mean of our total from each score. Well, first we need to calculate the mean. We can just do that with the mean function. Here we are. Now m is equal to our mean. And then we can create our deviation coded scores as score minus the mean. And here, this is how much different each participant's score was from the mean score rather than their just their original score. And we can do that all really easily rather than 10 separate times subtracting the mean. Let's say we want to create Z scores, we could also calculate the standard deviation of our score. So 9.7, we simulated it from a distribution where the standard deviation is 10, but samples aren't always exactly the same as the population. So we can create a Z score by subtracting the mean from each individual score and then dividing that by the standard deviation. So we can look at here, now we have a z-score, that's how many standard deviations different from the mean is each participant. And we've created that with just four lines of code. 